Imagine with me, if you will. The year is 2022. I am on a plane and you are sitting next to me wondering what in the heck I'm doing to my napkin. The napkin of power. Uh, that's right, folks. On some flight, randomly, I decided that I wanted to make a Deadpool cosplay, but make it 1950s. I don't think the idea of a kick suit is quite as catchy as I thought it was, but the idea is here. And so what I'm doing today, because that's actually not useful anymore, is we're gonna make the thing. With what you may ask, fantastic question. Let me show you. So I dug through my stash of patterns and found this adorable little 1950s number. We're going to just make the bodice section of this with the cross hatches being black and the body of it being red. And by red, I mean the most ridiculous red fabric I think I found in the entire estate sale, but that's a little later. And then I'm going to make some type of circle skirt, possibly using the Mrs. Depew pattern, maybe just winging it, because that's what I do here on this channel. But the kicker is it's going to button down the front. But the most important part of a kick suit, if you will, the pants. Ignore the envelope, it's really bad. But these pants right here, I, <laughs> I am hoping that I am skilled enough to do this because these are about one inch too small, which like only an inch, hallelujah. Like that's amazing. And I might have a new little <clears throat> trick under my sleeve courtesy of my friend Tina. So we're gonna try to upgrade this and upgrade this because why would they be my size? That's just too easy. So now the first real process in this is going to be ironing my pattern pieces flat so that I can use them and then tracing them out. Now listen to me, I, I knew that this might be a possibility because the lady that anytime you see that handwriting and that, yeah, she, she was not, she was not nice to her patterns. Um, uh, she was really not nice to this one. Like really not nice. I have no idea if I can use this because not only is there old tape, there's also new tape. Why is there new tape? Oh no, she made like a whole section from tape. All that, that's tape. Oh, dang it. I was really hoping it wasn't gonna be quite this bad. Listen, there is a world where I don't make the pants and I just wear leggings because I mean, let's be real, Deadpool's pants are basically leggings. What could I make to go on top of them? Could I make little details? Hmm, maybe. Oh my God, this is so, this is so bad. And I'm sure my fellow pattern people are just like cringing right alongside me. Ugh. yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, hate this. I don't even know if there's enough line to use this. Like, look at this thing. It's just pathetic. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> oh, good. The waistband's fine. Also, I think there's only one piece. So like, I don't, I don't see like front and back, I, unless they're taped together, which I highly doubt. I think this is only one piece. So I, I think this um, was a great idea. And now we're gonna pivot. pivot. Listen to me when I say I took far too long to be able to process that than I care to admit. But what I'm going to do instead, okay, we're gonna scrap the idea of making pants. A top and a blouse in <clears throat> two days is enough. Did I mention it's Tuesday and this is on Friday? Yeah, but here's the deal. What I'm gonna do instead, I'm going to go find some type of red leggings. Are they gonna be a dark red? Are they gonna be a model red? I don't, they're gonna be some kind of red because I don't have red leggings. We're just gonna scrap the idea of making pants. We're gonna do blouse and skirt and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, uh, yeah, let's go. But not until I had put the pattern into the corner of shame. Now listen, this is all the math that I figured out how to do to size up from a bus 43 waist 37 pattern to my current Bust 49, waist 40, self. Spoiler alert, it doesn't go well. Because once I had realized that my initial calculations were incorrect, I went back through 
and did it again. And again. And just when I thought I had it, I finally gave it a go. And this time around, I tried the pivot and slide method. Pivot! Wherein you take one point, you measure out to the side, you pivot from the sewing point above pivot! to get yourself into a larger size without having to change things like armhole size or neckline size. And while I did absolutely give it my 110% best, this method did not end up working for me, probably due to user error and not because of the technique. Because while this back piece does look relatively correct, and the front piece was passable, I believe the yoke is where I just went off the rails on this. Is this objectively correct? Absolutely not. I have no idea what I did with that yoke, but the only thing I can do right now is just make a mock-up and try it on. And am I gonna do the tab accent sizing up correctly? No, absolutely not. I'm just gonna like slap an extra half inch on there or whatever it's gonna take because I have two days. Okay, it's at least cut out, but <laughs> I'm dubious that I've done this correctly, so that's just all there is to that. But I have a new toy to play with. Well, a new vintage toy. This is a Tacket system that I, I think Christina sent to me. Christina with love, if you know, don't know who she is, one of my best friends, and she sent this to me, and I'm very excited to get to use it, because I don't, don't know how this works, so we're gonna figure it out. But from what I can tell, it's basically like carbon paper on either side and then wacky. Yes, technical terms around here. Directions. After fabric has been cut according to pattern, leave the print, the, the pattern pinned in place. Oops, I should probably put those back. Work on a solid table with your finest finish will be protected by the felt on the base of your tacket. Oh, that, a little green felty. Oh, they're still in here. Oh, oh, look at that. Like all the supposed colors, maybe. Are they still colorful? Oh, they are. Ooh, what color do I wanna use? Use the color with the least amount of contrast. So not the most, the least. Cause like I would aim for the blue, obviously, easy to see. It's also a tester run, so I'm not super worried. Don't lose these, Stephanie. Probably a yellow, that'll, that'll be good. Cause yellow's not, it's enough contrast, but it's not too much contrast. Yellow, subtle, absolutely not. Kind of like me. Cool, so then I put this on either side, I pin it, and then I use the little tacky boy to uh, do exactly what I just did. Amazing, let's try this. So, I just need these couple of marks right here. Let's take our little tool and the bright yellow, open it up, sandwich it in. It's really curly, cause it's really old. So it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. Foldy over. How the hell am I supposed to see where this shit is? Yeah, okay, Brenda, but like, what What now? Like, am I just supposed to know where these marks are? Pump the hate breaks, Thanos. Stephanie, read the instructions. It says to leave it pinned except where you're gonna mark. You need to lift the pins there and slide it just on the fabric and your pattern's on top. So pattern, tack it paper, fabric, fabric, tack it paper. Seems obvious and yet, here we are. All right, adjusting pins now. Okay, that makes more sense, great. Like, it shows you right there what I was supposed to do. Now, we take, and then just what, like whack it? How hard am I supposed to whack it? That's what she said. I guess I'm just gonna whack it as hard as I can. <laughs> this is perfect for our little chaos gremlin like me, amazing. Okay, we're all lined up. Three, two, one, <clears throat> and... Eh. Wham. Okay, listen, if you have some frustration at the fact that maybe you uh, messed with the pattern or can't find things, this is kind of a lovely little way to get your frustration out mid project. <laughs> okay, now the grand question of, did it work? First, we pull out the piece of paper, paper. Oh, it's got little marky-do's on it. 
And then the real question, did it work? Ooh, look at that, it did. <laughs> Cute little yellow marks. Okay, one of them, it's like very light on this side. Okay, how about the other side? Yeah, so that first one I clearly didn't hit hard enough. But other than that, it's a cute little system. Well, heck, I'm gonna use this all the time. <laughs> Score vintage tools that still work. Okay, enough uh, fiddle fabbing here. Let's um go back to the project. POV, you're me trying to figure out why the yoke is gathered. Cause that's not right. <laughs> not right at all. Ta-da! Yeah, don't mention the fabric. I don't want to talk about it. So, okay. What do we have here besides not ideal? Oh, hang on. I got to pin something. Maximum effort. Can I do the waist at least? Like, what's happening here? As I pull a side muscle. Ah! Okay, we're gonna not step on that and we're gonna go get a clip. Let's look at the side that's pinned. What an idea. It's going to be trimmed a little bit through here because it's there's only going to be bias. But this just looks so boring without the gathers. Like, boo. Okay, here's what I think I'm going to do. Is it going to bite me in the ass? I don't know. We're going to pull this down to here because then if the tab accent goes along here, it's almost the neckline of where I'm at. It also will then allow me to, sh I'm just gonna shove this thing down so that I can get some gathers. Gather, 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 gather. Cause like it needs gathers, it's so flat, it's boring. And the shoulders, are we gonna care about the shoulders? I don't know. Like listen, the shoulders aren't the worst thing I've ever done. And I'm sure they're gonna be tucked in. I think the shoulders, shoulders, shoulders. Uh, I think the shoulders will be fine. It's gonna be a little weird if they pucker, but I just, uh, <laughs> it's a costume, I have two days. Okay, let's go make those changes. Ta-da! Is it ostensibly any different? No, but there is, a, I can tell a little difference and I still, these have got to go. These are absolute trash. So those are not gonna happen. I'm probably gonna like just not sew those until I'm done with the rest of this and then I will deal with that because the waistband situation thing at the bottom is the last thing. No, the zipper would be the last thing, but either way, it's gonna be very close to the end. So, I don't know, man, I, I, uh, the slide and pivot, I don't know if it's for me. Anyway, this is close enough that if the costume were to look like this when I wear it on Friday, good a f enough. Let's go cut it out of the real stuff now. But in fact, dear viewer, she could not cut it out of the real stuff yet because she had not in fact washed the real stuff yet. So I had to do that and then go to bed. Hi, hi, hi. It's day two and I have everything clean and it is <clears throat> uh, five. It's it's almost 5 p.m. P p.m. on Wednesday. I'm supposed to wear this to con on Friday. I don't know if this is going to go well, but here's what I do know. It's going to be a good day. Are you having a good day? I hope you're having a good day. You want to know why not? I know it's going to be a good day because I found another yard of that weird red fabric in the scrap bags that I was going through today to make room for the new bolts that I pulled out of the storage unit. Yeah, because I also run a small business on the side, because why not? But either way, I have found an extra yard of fabric, so if nothing else, that is what's gonna make this a good day. So I'm gonna just go, because at least it fits me. It might not be exactly how I think it's gonna be, but it does fit me.
How am I cutting this wrong? It's a straight f***ing line. Almost a straight line. And like a grandfather at the breakfast table, I'm going to read the paper, also known as the instructions, because I have not done that yet. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh. Well, that was illuminating to show you all the things that I didn't do, but it did prove that, yeah, I, I don't, did not size the bodice front up correctly because there was no gathers, which is why I left just a little on the end there so I could make it wider. Is it going to work? I don't. I don't honestly know, but I guess we're both going to find out together. So tabs are done. They are very loose and this one looks like a DNA coil. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was doing there. So these are at least done. I will pin them onto the bodice, but the bodice is next. What it wants me to do in the instructions is it wants me to do this tuck first and then run the gathering stitches. So I will do the tucks and the gathering stitches leaving my black thread in because I can't be bothered to care. But I'm gonna make the tucks in the fronts like way smaller because that was like the one place that was still really tight. So I'm gonna make it like half of what it is. So it doesn't really, not really gonna match. Don't really care. And then I'm supposed to tack these things down somewhere up here. I'll read the instructions again and figure it out once I run the gathering stitches. It's fine. Why did I wait till the last minute to do this? Oh yeah, cause I'm me. Okay, so here's the deal. What the instructions want me to do is to take this face yoke and press along the edge so it folds over nicely. I have not even tried to iron this fabric yet, so I guess let's go see if I can even do this. Because if not, I'm just gonna stitch it like normal and then hammer it down and then probably top stitch it. But let's be real, I would top stitch it anyway. So let's just see if it works. Honestly, I've given thing worse presses than this, so let's go ahead and attach it on. Okay, front is done enough. Uh, thank goodness this fabric has just the smallest amount of stretch because otherwise, <laughs> I don't know. It's very odd. But now we don't have time to dilly with this because we have to do, where are you? This, the back. And I'm gonna move the darts to where I cut instead of where they wanted them. And then we're gonna sew it all down. And I'm going to hem and haw about how to do the closures probably another day because we'll jump into the skirt. But first, we must dart. Fabric is comfortable for sensitive skin. It can also withstand the temperature of over 1,000 degrees. And with some top stitching done, it was time for bed. Good morning. It's day three. It's about 10 a.m. And I have a skirt to finish. Now I did actually end up finishing my entire bodice yesterday. 
some of which was a little bit of the, the creative solution side. Things like, I don't know, installing a skirt zipper upside down on the sides. So that way I would definitely be able to get in and out of it easily. Because I can't do a whole zip the way it's usually done. So I just flipped it around and we'll see if it works. <laughs> because that's how we do all things on this channel. We just try and sometimes they work. But now what's left is I actually did run all of the gathering stitches on all of my panels for my skirt. Because I just cut out big rectangles made three of them. The back one's going to be the biggest one. And then the two smaller ones are going to be on the side front. I have yet to decide a few couple things. Number one, am I going to do this all buttons? I have no idea. Thank you for asking. Number two, I am almost out of black thread and my husband can go get me more black thread. Do I want to use black thread or do I just want to put red on top and black on the bottom? And three, I have panels today that I want to attend. So I better get going. This is why you don't sew late at night when you're exhausted. I was ironing my skirt seams flat so I could just put a hem in there. This one right here. Yeah, okay, there's the wrong side. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, yeah. But, um, hang on a second, wait for it. If you go to the other side, I sewed it backwards. So one of these seams would be on the outside and that's not what we're doing. So now I get to seam rip one of these stupid things, probably the unironed one, and sew them back together and then put a hem in it. Bah! Also, yes, I am wearing the same dress as yesterday, and no, I don't care because I'm going to change before I go to the Comic-Con because I have an entirely other Back to the Future dress that I made that I left in a short instead. So that's what I'm wearing tonight, so I don't care that I'm wearing the same thing. Okay, let's go uh, apparently seam rich the daylights out of this. In every film, was a moment when the hero hits rock bottom. So after I begrudgingly ripped out the entire seam and put it back in again, it was time to sew up a hem. And in true Stephanie fashion, I had not yet realized that my actual sewing thread was running drastically low. So the entire time I sewed the hem, I was playing chicken with myself and my own inability to stock black thread in my sewing room. And with narrowly squeaking out that hem, it was time to go over and make a waistband. Phew! And due to the weight of this, I actually decided to put in some very thick twill tape to kind of hold the waistband structure because this skirt, she's beefy. So I nestled it in its little fold, cut off the excess, slapped it all together off camera, and it's time for the reveal. And while we watch me finish off this ridiculous reveal, I do just want to add that I did enjoy this project. However, I don't know if this bonus was just me doing it wrong, the fabric doing me dirty, or just in generally my inability to pivot and slide, but it was vastly too large. So I do intend to make it a little bit smaller for this upcoming con that I want to wear this exact same outfit to, but sans the barrage of safety pins that are holding me into this outfit. Oh yeah, and I'm also probably going to put buttons along the skirt. If you enjoyed this video, I do hope you will stick around, maybe subscribe, and I hope you're sewing in chaos. We'll see you next time. And like a grandfather at the ter- hmm, fuck. Um, oh my god, this is so bad. I just want you to open. That's all I want. Ah, I hate this.